Totally. Yes. yes. Welcome to <coughs> Majesty Christian Television Network. We welcome you at this season and at this period after a long time of holiday. You know, compulsory holiday given to us by COVID-19. <laughs> the lockdown. <laughs> so we are so excited to be to be coming your way this evening. And we thank you for welcoming us in your home. We have exciting topic which we want to bring discuss and we encourage you to participate with us call your friends and let them call into the studio line because we have experts who are going to discuss on this topic with us the topic is racial discrimination and police brutality what should we do about it if you look at police brutality it's like becoming a viral disease mm -hmm. everywhere even in africa mm -hmm. uh, more especially in nigeria how people are being brutalized yeah. then you wonder are they not supposed to be friends exactly why are they becoming enemies mm -hmm. so uh this whole thing is really causing uh, uh, a horror and a, a, a chaos all over the whole world mm -hmm. so on may 25th 2020 george fear Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, died in Minneapolis, Minnesota, after Derek Chauvin, a white police officer, knelt on his neck for almost nine minutes while he was handcuffed face down in the street. Two other officers further restrained um, uh, Floyd, and a fourth officer prevented on Lucas from intervening. During the final three minutes, Floyd was motionless and had no pulse. Officers made no attempt to revive him, and Chavin's knee remained on his neck even as emergency medical technicians attempted to treat him. Two autopsies determined the manner of Floyd's death to be homicide. Is that not so wicked? Yep. All of those minutes you held his neck mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. by, by your knee. Yeah. Oh, God. So Floyd has been arrested on suspicion of passing a counterfeit $20 bill at a nearby market. So several witnesses took video of this incident, which were widely circulated and broadcast along with security camera footage from nearby businesses. A criminal complaint that are filed against Chauvin stated that Floyd repeatedly said he could not breathe while standing outside a police car, resisted getting in the car, and intentionally fell down. He went to the ground face down, and after Chauvin placed his knee on Floyd's neck, Floyd repeatedly said, I can't breathe, mama, and please, and yet no mercy was granted to him. So this event had sparkled a uh, protest and uh, demonstration all over America and also across the whole world. So it has highlighted to us, you know, the, 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 the incident of racial discrimination and police brutality. So in this show, we want to discuss what needs to be done to end this sort of discrimination against humanity. So on our panel tonight... We, we have Mr. Richard Dodo, who is a business developer and also a social commentator. Richard, welcome, please. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And also, we have on the other side, uh, Honorable Colin Smeke, who is a counselor and a social affairs um, officer on Ostend, Belgium. He was the former, a uh, one time former NIDO Europe chair. Um, Honorable Paul Collins, please, can you say hello to our our listeners thank you thank you so very much um apostle helen for having me um hello viewers i'm happy to be here and uh, i hope uh, we'll be able to uh, give you something that you can uh, take home and uh, begin to work on um, um a world that is uh, free of racism uh, good evening and um, you know welcome on board thank you right so we encourage our listeners and those who are watching us online and those watching from the Facebook, please feel free to give us a call on the studio line, which is 3120 
1610 or you can whatsapp us on 3162604632 and now the question begins okay ha huh. so how could the world allow racial discrimination and police brutality especially against black africans to reach this dangerously present level what do you have to say <laughs> uh, or any of you can take it off let me start i, I think let's start with uh, with uh, honorable collins uh, yes oh well thank you um very very uh, pertinent uh, question um well essentially it has uh, racial discrimination has um, you know come to the point it is today because uh, it has largely been allowed to thrive um now don't get me wrong um not all white people are racist as a matter of fact uh, there are very strong signs that um, the vast majority of white people are very very accommodating you know uh, free-minded uh, people uh, that respect uh, racial equality but you see it takes just um, a few bad uh, apples to uh, you know spoil the whole lot and uh, when you bring it down to um, the uh, police um, you know uh, force especially in uh, Europe and uh, and the United States of America uh, you will see that uh, again we are dealing with um, you know um, a, a minority of very bad apples within the police force but you see it takes just that small minorities who have been ignored for way too long to make the kind of uh, devastation that uh, that we are seeing today, uh, be it um, you know for very small issues uh, or to very large uh, issues, uh, so that brings you also to the issue of uh, systemic uh, racism, that is racism that is actually embedded in the system itself, uh, sanctioned inadvertently, I must add, by the law, so that. People, uh, police officers, in doing their job in enforcing the law, could actually uh, be acting in very racist way, but they are legitimate in their action because the law uh, sanctions it. And I will give just one um, a very tiny uh, example. That is, in the, in Britain, they call it a stop and search. In uh, in New York, it is called a stop and frisk. Now that is um, a law that permits the uh, police officers to stop anybody at their will that they believe um, you know, is acting suspiciously or whatever to search and uh, to stop and search the person. Now, what um, data eventually showed both in the UK, uh, in London specifically, and in New York, is that disproportionate number of um, you know, black people were found to have uh, suffered under this uh, stop and search uh, policy. So that is one example of uh, or systemic, um, you know, racism. Okay. So you are dealing with individual racism that people have largely, in, um, you know, ignored. But you are also dealing with institutional or systemic uh, racism, which is sanctioned by the law. Yet, you know, it is used in dehumanizing uh, people based on uh, on their race. Well. This is powerful. So the, the examples you've just mentioned are, are um, cases in America, is that? Uh, cases and, and, and UK. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, yeah, so, so I just singled uh, so, out those so, two so do, examples. Do we also see what, what then do we say regarding the ones in Nigeria or in Africa? Because we have systematic racism and individual racism. So do, which one is being practiced then in, 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 in Africa? Well, in Africa, uh, we are dealing more with, um, <laughs> you know, ethnic uh, discrimination. <laughs> now, oh, okay. um, by and large, yeah. they mean the same thing, but you can't talk of race because um, in yeah, Africa, we are dealing with yeah. um, a single black ethnicity, okay? Yeah. And uh, so in Africa, yes, we're dealing with that, but more of the systemic uh, type uh, that have uh, remain unchallenged, you know, yeah. when uh, such crimes are committed, uh, they are either not, uh, you know, prosecuted in the right manner 
or people, you know, are allowed to just uh, go away with such uh, blatant uh, impunity that, um, you know, those coming uh, after them simply believe that, yes, it's all right mm. to, uh, you know, behave in such despicable manner mm. and, uh, and get away with it. So, yes, it's happening in Africa as well. Uh, yeah. But it has a different, uh, a different name or a different connotation. Exactly, exactly. But in the systematic, uh, systematic uh, racism, uh, as you have said, uh, uh, can 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 the black search the white? Can the I mean, can the black the black police search the white people, or is it only the the white police searching the blacks? Um, well, the law in, in itself uh, cannot it's be faulted. Anybody. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, it, it, it didn't mention that you whether black or white. Mm -hmm. It says everybody. But what has happened is this. I mean, when you make laws, um, you make them perhaps um, out of good intent. But it is only when you have implemented them and then you take the time to analyze the impact or the if effect of this law that you are then able to generate that data that tells you certain stories about the law yeah. now in this case of course uh, there are um, a minority of uh, white people that were searched both by um, white officers or by black uh, officers uh, but a significantly higher number of uh, you know black people we are found to be, um, you know, victims of this, uh, um, you know, stop and search. So uh, anyway, uh, the um, uh, law was discontinued in uh, in New York, but the, as a matter of fact, the uh, mayor of New York at the time uh, eventually not only stopped it, but apologized for when, you know, the devastation it brought to the uh, to the black community. Whereas in the UK, in the rhetorics uh, that um, Boris Johnson, the current uh, prime minister to power, uh, he actually doubled down on the need for uh, you know stop, stop and search to be brought back as part of his um, you know um, uh, security and uh, safety mm. um, you know policy. Yes, so you see uh, we have a long way uh, to go, and yeah. one can only hope that uh, he can be urged to uh, you know step down on that using yes. data available both in the uk and the united states uh, in terms of uh, how disproportionately uh, disfavored the um, you know ethnic minorities especially the black people have yes. been as a result okay. hmm. thank you so much you have something to add to what you have just said i would uh, take it from a different angle yeah, yeah. okay I would like to take the opportunity to commend, I would say, all people of color that live here in the Netherlands. Okay. Okay. For I would I would like to commend uh, people of color that live here in the Netherlands um, because I understand what it feels like to actually watch what the whole world saw. Yes. Um, and for us to basically hold ourselves in in this disciplined manner i commend people of color okay then comes the other thing which has to do with the mayor of of amsterdam okay um i know there's a lot of backlash that is going out to her because she allowed the demonstration to to take place at the dam yeah um i i also want to commend her for the courage she took in allowing us to basically have that platform mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, express our, uh, I would say, discontent yes. towards what actually happened in, 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 in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Now, having said that, I do agree with uh, what uh, our, our gentleman uh, yeah, Honorable Collins. said. Yeah. And I do agree with the fact that there are two uh, tracks that we should all be looking at. Mm. Um, indeed, there are good officers out there. We we all know that, and and yes, of course, it's the bad ones that basically make the headlines. So I get that as well. Yeah. But one thing for a fact is is that even the good cops, be them be them you know Caucasians or or white in this in this case, 
also harbor some level of resentment towards people of color. Mm. And I feel that that is where the core of this entire, you know, saga is. Because, first of all, we as people of color, when we live in systems that are not literally made for us, mm -hmm. we, by nature, you know, default on many of these things because it's not part of who we are or part of what we've lived before. So we then have to then adopt, you know, the, the, the a system which was not made for us um, and, and, and also have to fight back at that same system because we can't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. So there is work that needs to be put into allowing us to truly understand, you know, that system, yes. which is not made for us. And you would ask, or one would ask, uh, how do we get to that? Okay. You know, in Holland, um, and I'll speak for Holland because this is where I've been for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, uh, they talk about integration. Yeah. And you would ask yourself, <laughs> what, what is integration? Um, integration is allowing yourself to understand where you are okay you know yes and also be able to quote unquote adopt the norms of that system okay so that the system doesn't become an alien to you and you also don't become an alien to the system yeah but if we want to narrow it down to racial discrimination we would say that or at least I would say that racial discrimination is something that I, I think we'll, it will take some time before we are able to to put it in a, in its place, mm. because many of these uh, actions or acts are so subtle that if you don't actually pay attention to it, you would not even realize that you are being discriminated against or upon, and and that's where people of color should focus on, as in focus on how to package how the system makes us feel so that when people that, you know, write these systems or uh, uh, policymakers are putting these policies together, they can then factor in some of these things that make life unbearable for us. Yes. So that is something that needs to be looked at. But overall, I would say that institution, institutions in Europe are not designed for us. So obviously we would always see it as, you know, as us being discriminated upon. And then comes the second layer where the people that are supposed to implement these uh, policies, mm -hmm. they themselves also are not culturally tuned to the differences. So I, I, I'll give you one example so you can get what I'm trying to talk about. Okay. Here in the Netherlands, um, if you're not working, mm -hmm. you do get some level of support yes from from the government yeah now most people of color that live here mm -hmm. most of them and more so more especially those from africa end up sending part of that money to you know family friends you name it back in africa okay whatever they do with the money shouldn't be anybody's, anybody's concern. i totally agree with that yeah. but that is not factored in when this money is being given to you so if you go to, to um, I would say, the stat house and you're complaining that, oh, this money is not sufficient for you, obviously it's alien to them because that amount has been worked out that it should be sufficient for, you know, the average man or woman. Okay. But the average man or woman that is born and raised here or that is, you know, in, in, uh, a native of, of uh, the Netherlands, will not be sending money to anybody. Do you get it? So a, a person of color would then take the money and then still fraction it and send part to, you know, mom, yeah. dad, wh whoever. And then that goes at the expense of some of the bills that he or she is supposed, supposed to, to pay. pay. Yes. You see, so you need to look at all of the factors that surround the insensitive nature of the system in which we find ourselves in. Obviously, nobody would say that the Dutch government should give people money so they can send to their people wherever it is they are. No, that wouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen neither. 
But if the Dutch government or the institutions within the Netherlands understand that these are some of the realities that people of color have to go through, when dealing with them, you know, there should be that consideration, that compassion towards them or towards that peculiar uh, uh, circumstance that we find ourselves in. That is where we, we, we are at the moment. And then we look at George Floyd. Uh, the despicable, you know, killing of, of this, this young man in, in, uh, in Minnesota basically touched everybody. I mean, I called my mom back in Africa. I spoke to her. She said she watched it and she just burst into, into tears. I remember the first time I was watching it, I said to myself, whoa, this can't be happening. Why can't the gentleman or, gen or, or, or woman who, who was filming just rush on the police officer so that, so that exactly, so that he, he, or he can feel a bit distracted of the neck of this young man, you know? Yeah. But none of that took place. And worst of all, he got up after the police, after the paramedics have come to, you know, pick him up. And he walked up to the Chinese guy and then he said, let's get out of here. Like nothing happened. And it takes a monster to actually do what he did. But let's agree one thing. There are monsters in all of us. There are monsters in all of us, regardless of how we want to look at it. The thing is, how we manage that monster in us, or how we take that monster in us, is based on the circumstances surrounding all of us. And it's easy for me as a black person to literally point a finger and say this is racism. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to do that. But I should understand that, <coughs> yes, race relations are important, more so in law enforcement. But the question is, how are these men and women in uniform, how are they trained? They, of course, have their own personal, you know, chips on their shoulders, which makes them also a bit rough when it comes to people of color. These things have to be addressed and addressed in, in a way that will prevent future occurrence of these, these uh, scenes that we see around, around, around us. But when, when, we look at, uh, when, we, when we look at what is happening maybe in Europe or in America, mm -hmm. okay, where you have uh, the Caucasians and also people of color, mm -hmm. okay? But what about the ones happening in Africa, our own soil? But, but the thing is... Like, Africa, polishing, you know, yeah. maturing another Africa. Yeah, what do we say about it? I, I hear look you at what is going on in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Look at what went on in South Africa. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. How they were oppressed and oppressed in our own soil. Right. So is this a case of is this a case of weakness among us or stupidity? I would let me ask him okay. let, let him come in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Collins, yes. Um because America is not the only place it's not the only place where blacks have been uh, you know mishandled. America is not the only place. The only place. True, true, true. So, so, yeah. so, 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 human beings have been mishandled in African soil as well. But that, even that, in that South fall, Africa, that falls in line even with, in Nigeria, that falls in line with police brutality. And so not, and why, 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 why are we not doing something about it? And why is the government not saying something about it? Is it that also we are stupid? Um, we're, 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 we're dealing yeah. with two different things. I want here. him to speak. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, um, racism or racial discrimination uh, happens uh, everywhere. Like I said uh, earlier on, it goes by different names, uh, you know, depending on, uh, on the location. In the case of uh, South Africa that, um, you know, you brought up, uh, the name they had for it was apartheid, you know. So where, you know, they were... Um, uh, white people, white South Africans were discriminating uh, against uh, black South Africans, sanctioned by the law in, you know, on the basis of uh, the South African law, it was, it was uh, legal for them to do what they did at the time until the world, uh, you know, started speaking out and then uh, apartheid as, uh, as um, an ideology, as a political ideology of oppression, was then uh, toppled. Now, in uh, in Nigeria, uh, on other parts of uh, of Africa, where you have um, 
you know, people being treated uh, as uh, as underdogs, as uh, subhumans, uh, just like you have the caste system in uh, in India, um, that happens because um, you know people for whatever reason just feels that they are you know of a higher class of humanity than uh, other people, taking away that whole notion of uh, of humanity. So it is not something exclusive to um you know uh, to europeans or to the world mm -hmm. yes in africa uh, you have it and uh, wherever it exists i think the point is that it's got to be called out okay now there is no uh, even here in uh, in europe or in america you have black people who also are racist against white people they harbor some um you know notions uh, that discriminates against uh, you know white people mm -hmm. they too are guilty of the same thing that uh, we are talking about about um, you know uh, white people and whenever and wherever it occurs uh, i think it's more of a human thing now because that tendency uh, for humans to dominate other humans uh, because of the reality that uh, some people are inherently evil-minded. Yes. That is why you have the law. It is the law that then regulates the behavior and the relationship of people in the society. Right. Now, the thing we are dealing with here is either the law is inadequate in the sense that um, it actually permits, perhaps inadvertently, a situation where one human is able to discriminate uh, against uh, the, other. Uh, the other, or you have a system where the um, individuals are simply exhibiting their inherently bad character and evil minds. And the law is then too slow to actually bring those people to books. You recall uh, the case of uh, Chauvin in, um, you know, uh, in Minneapolis uh, that killed uh, Mr. Floyd. Mm -hmm. Well, you you saw how long it took for them to, uh, for the first officer, the principal officer, uh, Chauvin, to be, uh, you know, uh, charged to court and then arrested. And then it took an, a longer period of time for the other officers, uh, you know, yeah. to be um, to be arrested and charged uh, as well. Yeah. So I hear, I understand it when people say that, um, you know, uh, the Lego machine grinds at a very low uh, space. Well, maybe they should begin to look at how to hasten that uh, pace so that, uh, you know, more devastation uh, doesn't happen and so that others could learn uh, lessons uh, from that. I, I believe that um, in the course of this uh, conversation, uh, you know, you will allow the latitude to look at what is missing and uh, what needs to be done or what we should begin to do as, uh, you know, uh, a global community of uh, human beings okay. to begin to address these uh, issues. Okay. I would say that one thing we should not lose focus on is that we have two tracks here. And in, in our delivery, we should distinctively decide on on what it is that we are addressing mm. um there is racial discrimination which is in one bucket and then there is police brutality yes. which is in the other bucket yes so uh, I, I think the first segment will be racial discrimination yeah and uh, we we have to relate to ourselves and say have you felt discriminated upon and not so much by the police force but so much by people in the community that you live <laughs> or people in your office or people at your workplace yeah do you or have you felt dis discriminated upon you see discrimination is is a feeling in a large to, to a large extent is mm -hmm. how you, someone of a different skin color mm -hmm. makes you feel yeah exactly do you get it and and here in in the Netherlands I, w I would, I mean, I, I can boldly say that in as much as I turn a blind eye to some of these acts. Yes. And I dare myself not to grant them, you know, that which they want, which mm. is for, for, for me to feel like they are discriminating against me. Yes. I, don't, I don't grant them that. Yeah. 
it, it puts me in a different bracket because at the end of the day, what someone may look at or what someone may experience and say, oh, I feel discriminated upon mm -hmm. may not necessarily be something that I would, I would look at and say, oh, I feel discriminated same way that this gentleman. Yeah, you just think not, it may be. Do, do you get my point? Yes. But there, there indeed are the, the classic scenarios where we can all maybe talk about which is me walking or you walking into a shop, for example. Yes, or and, somebody's and, following you. And, and then you, you immediately see um, either the owners of the shop or... Coming or out to... You, you, you get, you know, yeah. they, they're looking at you like uh. like you, you you plan to kill them and, and steal something. <laughs> you know, that you you see, that I have, I have seen as well. Okay. And I have experienced it as well. But I, I think I always look at it as lack of knowledge on the side of whoever it is yes that is reacting this way okay so i look at it from that angle mm -hmm. but that does not mean or that does not rule out the fact that it is a very racially motivated action and the media has a lot to to to, to answer to because if you look at what happened in America, for example, mm -hmm. and then you get all these people, uh, you know, looting and burning things and stealing things and what have you. If you check mainstream media, they were only showing black folks that were actually going into these shops <laughs> and running out with things. However, there were thousands, literally thousands of white Americans who were doing the exact same thing, maybe even more than the black people. Some yeah, of the black people we were, that. We were standing, that. and of course, it was a <laughs> moment in history where many of them didn't know how to react. Yes. Out of the anger and frustration, I can understand the the the, the breaking of things and, and 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 things like that. I can understand that frustration being brought out that way. But that has no relationship with whatever was was happening. You see that that sort of breaking into people's. Um, Hard end uh, uh, shops and whatever uh, doesn't yes. have any relationship to what was happening. I, I think you're wrong, and I think you're wrong because it has a relation. Why must you go and begin looting? I no, mean, why? Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that looting is something that we should. Uh, I would say project. Or yeah, they were, they were projecting their but, anger, but, but what, what relationship has it got with looting? Take away the material things that got destroyed. Take all of those things away, then go into the emotions of a person and how caged a person feels. Then you would understand that breaking a few a few things is actually nothing. Seriously, it can be replaced any given day, any given second. How you make me feel cannot be replaced. Do you get it? So it, it's I mean the 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 core relation between the acts of of these people and us sitting behind and saying, no, they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't have done this. No, 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 no. I'm not going to go down no, that path No, but these are all. the things that are making them to look at us as if but, we are not contributing but, to the economy. But the because thing, it has but, no relationship. But the thing somebody is... Somebody has been wounded, somebody has been killed, and then we are now demonstrating and then going to break shops and then looting the place. Again. You can break the shop, you can destroy things, but you don't need to begin to carry things out of the shop. Well, listen. If I may come in here... Yes, please do. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, um, there are no fancy ways of saying it. When people have committed crimes, they have committed crimes, and they need to be called out, they need to be condemned, and the law followed in terms of uh, bringing them to books. Yeah. Now, those people who went about the lootings actually did so out of criminal intentions they had absolutely nothing to do with protesting the death of yes. uh, mr floyd now when we begin and that comes uh, from the mainstream media as well when we begin to mix that act and trying to use it to discredit the protest we are making a very very huge mistake True. Crimes have been committed, mm -hmm. and those crimes should be dealt with accordingly and should not be used to confuse the legitimacy of the um, protests that were going on. They had a right to protest, and they had very good reason should subtract from those, okay? But when people begin to confuse uh, the two, 
Well, then uh, there is an issue to it. And let's not forget that it has been proven that some wife, white supremacy groups were actually planted in those protests to initiate the looting, the arson, the, the uh, fires that were set in those things simply to discredit the protesters. Oh. That, that too has been proven. So you see, we are looking at a very, very large web, very neatly constructed to actually make the protesters look bad. I mean, that is not to subtract of so from the fact that there are some bad eggs amongst them. If it's like them. a setup, no? If it's a setup, the protesters, they have failed. Yes. Because if it's a setup, right. as you spoke, if it's a setup mm -hmm. that the white people, the white skinned uh, or the white headed uh, were used to put fire on those areas, eh? Mm -hmm. Or to open up those shops mm -hmm. for the looting. Mm -hmm. So they will now want to watch to see if truly truly the black man is angry to the point that he will not go and loot or he is just angry and just embittered for what he has seen. Well, I, I think that, listen, we, 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 we can all play judge and jury on this issue. We can all play that, but that is just a game. That is just, I use the word play because I feel that if you walk the walk of what black Americans have to go through, if you walk that walk, believe you me, you would have a whole different outlook when it comes to this. I remember when I went to live in the States, I wasn't seeing, I would say, you know, this this whole black-white kind of thing. I wasn't seeing it here in Europe. Mm. I wasn't. Mm. But then I moved to California. Yeah. And I was in California with three of my, you know, colleagues from work. Yeah. They were Dutch. I mean, Dutch colleagues, so blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. And... In a shop, someone walked up to me yes. to ask me why I was walking with these two Dutch ladies or these two white women. Oh. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. Do you get it? Yes. But the part of town we were, they were like wondering why I was with them. So they approached me. In this park place. Okay, you were not supposed to walk with the white people. I don't even know what was going on. <laughs> you, you get, I, I really don't know. And they asked me that question. And I said, well, what's wrong with it? You know? And then one, one black woman said, oh, you are a sellout. Oh. And, you know, so, so you no, know, but you see, these are personal experiences that <laughs> many, many, many people do not understand really? what is actually happening in America. <laughs> I'm a sellout because I'm walking with, quote unquote, a Caucasian woman or two Caucasian women. And I expose this thing, <laughs> generation to generation. To exactly. Oh God. Exactly. But when I mentioned when I mentioned to 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 them that I'm not even from out of I mean here. Yeah. Th then they kind of relaxed a little bit, and then one of them said, "Oh, so where are you guys from?" And then we said we were from the Netherlands. Obviously, they didn't know where the Netherlands was, but mm. but. That tells you how deep rooted some of these uh, um, racial discrimination yes. uh, acts have have uh, made Black Americans feel. So let's not again play judge and jury on this. At the end of the day, however way that system has conditioned them to become, mm -hmm. is because there is something wrong with that system. If I if you break out of that system and you, quote unquote, become a bit affluent, then you, the black man or black woman, begin to also think yourself as a white person. And then you also start looking down on the other black folks that don't have what you have. Exactly. Okay. So th these are all dynamics that play out. So when, when you see people run into Target, break down Target, uh, and steal things from Target, burn down Target, and, and, and things like this, it's partly due to how they have felt over the years. And they were bottled. Do you get it? So this, this has so, become the defining moment. Thank you. So I'm not saying that their acts are justified. No, no, no. No, I'm not. That's why I said let's not play judge and jury on this. But if you walk that walk, maybe, just maybe, maybe you would even do worse than we saw on TV. Do you get it? So those of us that live here in, in Europe and, 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 and I would say the Europeans, 
to a large extent, have, have done well. Let me just put it that way. To, to, to a large extent, they have done well in, number one, tolerating the differences. And I will talk specifically for the Netherlands. I don't know what happens in Belgium. In, in Belgium. Yeah. But here, there is that level of tolerance, which, you know, even though we feel it, we can live with it. Do you get my point? Even though we feel it, we can live with it. But if something happens which tips the balance, yeah. Yeah. black men and women here in the Netherlands will react. Let's ask uh, Honorable Collins, do, do, do you feel uh, any discrimination uh, in the side you are staying? Um, well, I think um, everybody feels it uh, everywhere. Because you are a politician, eh? Well, <laughs> I am, yes. Right, uh, so, but, I mean, when you sit with them in yes. your distance, do you feel, is there any way they relate with you, which you do uh, not like? Oh, yes. I mean, in some um, in some quarters, um, I would say um, 90% of the places, uh, or even up to 95% of the places uh, I show up yeah. on, the basis, on the basis of my uh, political work, Mm. I'm uh, I'm usually the um, the, only the, black the only black person. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Now I mean, it, from the look in the faces of um, a number of uh, people, especially those meeting me for the first time, you know, you have that feeling of uh, what is he doing here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and yes. then um, init initially, I've had uh, people talk about me in my presence mm -hmm. as if I wasn't there. For right. example, for example. Does he actually understand Dutch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, talking about me, and then, uh, you know, I just remind them, hello. And, uh, exactly. you know, <laughs> so anyway, um, over over years, you know, over the years, you you know, those things, they begin to rescind. You know, people begin to uh, get used to you, um, maybe because you have, uh, you know, proved yourself, which you don't have to, uh, right. by the way. You know, but then uh, gradually they begin to get uh, used to you. But of course, uh, now and again, you notice quite a number of um, you know subtle uh, racism, like uh, Richard uh, actually pointed out uh, earlier. And it is those subtle racisms that are the most dangerous exactly. because exactly. people don't see them. Yeah. They exist, and there is this pretense that they don't exist. And then you suffer in silence. And in the work that I do in, in, in social affairs, for example, I will give um, specific um, examples. Now, there is this assumption that the social assistants uh, who are, you know, um, officers that uh, swore an oath, you know, before they take up uh, their job, all right? So there is this uh, assumption by fellow councillors that um, these officers are completely honest. So when they come with um, a recommendation about uh, a client, uh, it is assumed that everything that they are saying is based on the truth. But I do know that that is not uh, always the case. You have a small number of them, and I say this out experience um i'm in the middle of um you know the ethnic minority uh, group so day in day out um you know i hear stories of uh, things that happen how uh, situations are twisted sometimes outright lies sometimes you know files are not uh, investigated stories are made up so you see um i take some of these things with a pinch of salt and uh, do the best I can to encourage my colleagues. So please, let's take a second look at this. Sometimes seeking second chance, you know, for um, uh, for individuals. Because I know that it is not always the case that the social assistants are the same. Ah, but like I said initially, it takes just one uh, bad wow. apple, right. you know, to met untold hardship on an individual's uh, life. I mean, personally, I had also experienced uh, another situation where on a train ride, the um, uh, conductor, who again 
is um, you know a civil servant that swore an oath before he took uh, his job actually victimized me uh, declaring that my ticket was um, was invalid which was not the case and uh, out of principle i decided i was going to court because i believe in using the legal instruments available to where uh, you know try to change uh, you know uh, things that i don't find uh, palatable now it took um, an average of two years for this case to be finally uh, decided and it was decided in my favor because i made the case that the um, uh, that the conductor acted out of racial uh, bias now it was a delicate case because what won the case what made the judge actually listened to me and took my case was because i was able to provide the receipt with which i bought this particular uh, ticket otherwise the uh, conductor uh, through his lawyer was actually making the case that i must have picked up a, a used ticket from somewhere oh. now why would that insinuation yeah, I know, I know. or even yeah. statement be made if it wasn't for I, I let me ask both of you on the studio how many times have you bought a train ticket you know uh, from the uh, ticket um, dispensing machine mm -hmm. and then saved the receipt yeah that the uh, you know you are just interested in the ticket you exactly. take the ticket and then you you, you, you abandon the rest yeah. you see but i have this habit of keeping such uh, you know such things so when the uh -huh. uh, I, when the debate when the case was brought to the father no he he picked the uh, ticket well i was able to show the receipt and that was what uh, made the case imagine if i didn't have the receipt yeah. yes. i would have lost the case yeah and everything was based on uh, racial uh, discrimination. So you see, it's subtle, it's there. Yeah. And we need to uh, also be educating, you know, the victims or potential victims about the need to protect themselves. Yeah. You know, do the best you can. And then, um, you know, most of the time you can assume that the court, you know, will, uh, will do the right thing. But when it comes down to taking your word against the word of a police officer or uh, a civil servant that uh, swore an oath to do his or her job well of course they are not going to take your word right. you may be telling the truth yeah. but your race has made you even lost the case yeah. before the case actually yeah. started yeah that's 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 a very good and and, and mm -hmm. classic uh, example yes uh, and indeed racial discrimination has to be addressed but I feel that addressing it, we as black people need to be able to, uh, um, I would say, uh, put together um, um, the facts as in how it affects us, um, how it makes us relate to, to them. Um, if we are able to catalog that properly, I think then they can also use that to also do the training that they are, they are supposed to, you know, uh, do or, or give to some of these people, like, like you rightfully said, like this uh, conductor, for example, like, like the, the police officers and, and so on. Yeah. I mean, the training needs to factor in racial, I would say, profiling or racial discrimination. Yes. Some of their acts that can come across to us mm -hmm. as you know, ra yeah. racially motivated, yeah, yeah, yeah. when maybe, just maybe, that particular individual is actually not even acting based on race. But how he or she has been trained puts him into that bracket. So if the training is done with that in mind, mm. I'm sure most of these men and women in uniform would also, before they do something, think about the training they've had. Now, we look at, we look at, this Derek uh, Chauvin uh, uh, character, mm. he is acting out on things that he's been trained to do. Are you Together. saying? Are you saying he I was so. he was okay. trained to Just pick really. out black guys, uh, black guys, and to treat them differently from the white guys? What I'm saying is that he uh, he was acting on how he was trained. Don't forget. Don't deal with the black. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not even going into race yet, but yes. I'm. I mean, to deal Listen, with a criminal, to whoever he or she 
sees or feels as a bad nut. Okay. Now, this this arm choking, this neck choking thing, mm. it's part of their training until this whole rise of, of uh, uh, George Floyd mm. came about. Now they are ruling that out. They are making it no, illegal you, for No, them. no, no. You're supposed just to pin the person down maybe with your elbow here or with your knee, but for a very short time. Not for nine minutes. No, you see, yeah, I, I think I think what what you're not for nine minutes. what you're missing out is not to do with. I'm not referring to the act of of him with a knee mm. on his neck. I'm mm. not referring to that. Okay. I'm referring to the fact that part of their the training, training is to yes. is to do things like I, that. I, I, I think if I'm coming here, may I come here? The person may, to may, neutralize um, yes, whatever aggression that's what may, to they feel was coming. But to you them. know what I want to know here is why has why how different is George Floyd's treatment uh, or how different is it from the other African Americans who have also been killed unjustly in this way? I, I think there is no difference because the only thing which touches all of us is this how we saw for a long time. I, I, I how need, we saw it please, happen. I need to speak. I need to speak. Okay. Yeah. I think we are just being cosmetic about this whole issue. Okay. There are serious underlying racial problems mm -hmm. in this whole thing it's been on for generations it's been systematized so much so that the guy you said is trained to treat whoever a criminal whoever that way mm -hmm. subconsciously knows that if this is a black guy he must even do that maybe more friendly or whatever i mean i mean subconsciously He's more aggressive towards the black guy. He's more suspicious of the black guy. He's not trusting of the black guy. We have discrimination. We, have, we cannot pretend about but, that. But we are not my, saying... My, no, no, no. I, if we kind of cosmetically watch this thing, no, we are no, not no, doing no, justice. No, 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 no. We will be doing a disservice to those who have been going on the street and protesting. Because it's a sin. That is in the system. We cannot pretend about it. People don't... Nobody wants to touch it. But we, we who are victims, are kind of people who are victims, we cannot just be looking on and not do anything about it. it let's be realistic here. Yeah, but I'm trying, to, here. I'm trying to understand what you're saying now, right? Because because what you're saying stems from the fact that you you are you are overlooking that these men in uniform or men and women in uniform are trained in a particular way. So Regardless of how they are trained, you have to treat people with dignity. Yeah, yeah but respect. Even if it's a criminal. Listen. You know what I'm saying? There's a way you treat a guy and yet, you don't step on his human rights, you don't trample on his dignity, and you still let him face you see, the you law. Saw, or intentionally Listen, want to kill him. Let, let's, you like, know, like, 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 like Pastor said, pressing him down with the. Let us not uh, uh, sugarcoat anything. Yeah, absolutely. okay, let's not. How would you relate to what happened after if you look at images of a 71 year old man? Being shoved to the ground, he was white. Shot, shoved to the ground, his head hit the ground. Blood started oozing off. And policemen walking by him. It was a policeman who did it. How would you... It's part of his training. His training is that he's supposed to use his baton to shove somebody away so that that person doesn't come close to, to him. So it's part of his training. So let's not, uh, um, let, let's not jump the gun by overlooking the fact that how they are trained is also equally guilty in this entire thing. Yeah. Uh, if, I may, if I may quickly come in here. Right. I think I understand the basis of um, Richard's uh, argument uh, in regards to, to their training. Uh, but I think um, essentially... The officers that have uh, behaved badly to the point of taking people's lives mm -hmm. have actually used their training as springboards, crossed the, the line, yeah. and then you know yeah. committed the havoc yeah. that they committed. Yeah. Let us go by. And the they've not been punished for that. Example. That's yes. why they have the impunity to continue. Exactly. That's let's let's true. let's go by the um, example that is uh, before us now, which is uh, Chauvin uh, killing uh, Freud. Yeah. Now. Um, it is expected that when someone arrests, 
that you can use some measure of force. Yes. But the information that we are getting from the video clip uh, is that, number one, uh, the gentleman did not resist arrest, but let us take the worst case scenario that he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, he was handcuffed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Now, by the time you handcuff somebody, that is reasonable him. force, and that was exactly. sufficient. Yes. Going the extra mile of putting the knee on his neck and he was pleading for his life that chair is actually crossing hey. the line yeah. completely. Yes. Yet, that you can look at it from the point of view that, yes, he was applying uh, the law. No, that was murder. Yeah. And yeah. it was it it was intended to be to so. Kill. Yes. Okay. Yes. So and and then let me give you an example with Britain because I mean if I were in the United States, I probably would be a dead man today. Once in London, to be specific in Oxbridge, I went into the post office to make a purchase, and then I paid with a twenty pound uh, ten or twenty pound note, mm -hmm. just like um Mr. Floyd did, yes. which turned out to be a fake, um, fake note. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to the procedure. Oh. The, um, the attendant asked for my means of uh, identification, right. which I provided. First, she clearly told me what the issue was. I said, oh, I got the money as change. I mean, I, I gave 50 pounds somewhere, and it was part of the change that I got in my previous uh, purchase. She said, fine. As for my um, to, to her, she filled out a form, gave it to me to sign, mm -hmm. and explained to me that they are banned by law to confiscate that uh, okay. money yeah. and that they will send it to a special unit within the uh, police force. And if they needed more information, okay. they will get in touch with me. Yeah. And then she asked, do you still need the item that you wanted? I said, yes. So I brought out uh, another money, paid for it. And that was where the matter ended. Now, right. it was this same incident yeah. that took Mr. Yeah. Floyd's uh, life. Yes. Now, if it was yeah. in the United States, yeah. they would have called in the police. Yeah. And who knows well, if I would have been choked yeah. to oh, death. No. You're right. Just because of that. So different systems, yeah. you know, uh, different, uh, different ways. So in yeah. Belgium, for example... You can hardly find a police officer running after a victim or a suspect on the street because their training doesn't say they should do that. They have other means through um, you know, radio messaging, intercom or whatever, to try to intercept the person through you know, other police officers and so on and so forth so that you don't go into those kind of uh, physical uh, uh, attack, you know? Right. So that, that's what I can add to that. Okay, well, that, that's a good, very good uh, example of the differences between Europe and, and the United States of America. So, indeed, if what you said happened in... in, 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 in I probably wouldn't be having this interview with this you now because... Saying, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is basically what I'm trying to say, that we, oh we, are, we are fortunate it happened in the UK. Uh, well, police br brutality. Yes. I mean, we've we've been able to determine racial discrimination, which we can all attest to. Mm -hmm. And now let's look at police brutality. Okay. Now, various systems around the globe. Yeah. Like um, uh, Collins rightfully said, he yeah. gave us a clear example of a particular system. Yeah. As opposed to what happens in the in the in you, the in the, in the, in the uh, States of America. Correct. So. We we here. I'll talk about the Dutch police. Obviously, you just gave us an insight to uh, how the Belgian police force also uh, reacts. Mm -hmm. Here, here in Holland, and more so in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. there used to be a time where we, as black people, were very afraid of the police. The Dutch policemen. Yes. Until we began to have dialogue. Thank you. So I was thinking maybe Thank the American you. system have Thank to you. develop this dialogue system. Thank you. So so the, what I'm trying to say is that the Dutch approach mm -hmm. where they are trying to use community policing has actually reduced some of the tensions yeah. that was there or yeah. was building up between black men and women and the local police force. Yes. Maybe that is something that the Americans I actually think they have to adopt it because it has helped us. It has, in a, to a large extent. 
but don't mess with the Dutch police also. No, you can't because <laughs> even uh, two days ago, I saw them messing up a lady. Ah, there and we they go. were taking okay. their neck, taking their knee to the neck of the lady. Seriously? Seriously. Oh, oh it was in the, no. even the uh, social media. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we are in, the, let's say, the Stone Ages, uh, Stone Ages or the, I mean, the Dark Ages, for example. Mm -hmm. I think modern policing has got a human face and a human heart or should have a sure. human face and a human heart to it mm -hmm. i don't expect a modern police to be acting brutally like they are doing then that's not policing mm -hmm. that's a, some kind of op uh, you know um oppression or some kind of it's going to kind of d dominate them because of the uniform and because of the gun that should not be allowed but you know nobody nobody condones right. crime. You have all the means at their disposal to deal with a criminal who is even dangerous. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But they should use these powers, you know, uh, properly and as and when due. And not in an overbearing manner which can which cause like so I think sometimes they are indiscreet about the way they apply their power. And Look, power, a little somebody goes to a pilfer in a in a store. Before you know, a whole Army of police vans and uh, dispatch riders just arrived over one person. Because they are jobless. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous. Um, I, I think it, it's too exaggerated that it's, it's, it looks funny. I, I think, I They're think that... For no, I'm coming. Let's, no, let's maybe the police system or the p form of policing needs to change. Mm -hmm. right? Make it more realistic and, and let it be more human. You know, I think it will be more acceptable than the kind of brutal way they are going about things. I mean, nobody accepts that. And this is why I'm saying that you should look at the history behind some of these actions. There's, there's a reason why they, they, they take the, the approach they are taking. There are reasons. Now, over here, we don't have... I can't walk into a gun shop and buy a gun, for example. In America, you can walk into a gun shop and buy a gun. Mm -hmm. So, in many states across America, it's very yeah, legal you, to... Yeah, you are not licensed to do that. Do you get my point? Yeah. So, the police trainers basically look at it from a point where they assume that whoever the culprit is, is carrying a weapon. Yeah. No problem. Do you get it? Yeah. And, and no problem. One of the, one of the things, I, I think I've seen too many police interactions with black people in the past uh, uh, week than I have in my entire life. Because when, you know, in Facebook and other places, when you click and watch something, you know, you get all the these other things. The ones in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but having said that, is because of the history of what America is. And that is why we have what we have with the police, the police uh, uh, brutalities and things like that. But again, they need to look at it and change the training, change ta tactics. I recall somebody saying the other day that if you come and even, even if I'm running away and you want to stop me, of course, these days they have tasers and things like that. Mm. But... If you want to tase me or you want to shoot me, aim at a place that is not going to kill me. Oh, uh, do you get I it? Don't know. But when you go for their training, they basically shoot to kill. That 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 I'm sure they were not taught that, and they were not told that too. Well, that, that. Uh, so, but it's just the the sheer wickedness that is in them to to, to tries to manifest. To oh. Not, they are too afraid themselves. Oh, they are too envious. Oh, they are too afraid. They are <laughs> so insecure. Yeah, they, they are so afraid of the uh, the other party that they think they better kill before the guy kills it. Well, let, let's be honest. Anyway. Uh, let's be honest. I mean, the, the black, all right, the, the black American is a threat to the white American. It's a threat, regardless of how you look at it. And it should not be like that. Mm. It should not be like yeah, that. Yeah, but, but but then when we are talking about this brutality, I don't want us to only connect it to black and white. Let's take it back to Africa. The <laughs> <laughs> so what is happening to our own people? <laughs> uh, what is happening to our own people? Why must they be so brutal? Because when you see some certain things in social media, you begin to wonder. At what point did we become so wicked like this? Police brutality think, has to be addressed. I think what is supposed to be friendly. It's supposed to be, be, that's, that's to be friendly to the people, not yeah. not not enemy. Especially because, when it's the people yeah. that are paying your salary, for example, because it's our tax money that takes care of them. Yeah. And if you understand, I mean, you watch clips where a black man is telling a white man, "Hey, you work for me," you know, 
it, it, in most cases, it's also very provocative, you know. But they have to say that in order for you to also understand that, hey, we are humans here, or let's be humans here. Well, you know? I think, gentlemen, we are still running off, and uh, I have two more questions. But before then, let me read what Afrophobia is. Afrophobia is a term used to describe the specific... Uh, speci What's that? Now you need my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is something that describes um, racism mm -hmm. that is targeting the people of African descent. Descent, right. So it's Afrophobia seeks to or dehumanize and uh, deny the dignity of a large group of people. Mm -hmm. So Afrophobia manifests itself through acts of racial discrimination. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Direct, indirect, and structural and violence, including hate speech, targeting black people. It can take it can take many different forms like dislike, personal and antipathy, bias, bigotry, prejudice. Oppression, racism, structural and institutional discrimination, and so on and so forth. Hate speech and uh, systematic violence. So, I would like to ask us here how should American, African Americans respond to Afrophobia? Whoa, okay. Uh, first, let's. let's, and let's let, let's hear from our uh, colleagues. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, um, the um, case that is currently uh, trending, beginning from uh, from the United States, the incident in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. um, came to the attention of uh, the world through the social media. media. And, and so uh, that is a very important uh, um, that things are not just uh, swept uh, under the under the carpet. That's Correct. number one. Mm -hmm. um, number two, I believe that um, parenting is very very uh, important, very very key in tackling racial discrimination as well as uh, police uh, brutality, especially ones that are based on uh, on race. Mm. Now. I know what I tell my two uh, adult sons when they were growing up, when they were younger, mm -hmm. about race relations. I'll give a specific example. When they were much younger, they come back from school and they tell me things that they are taught in school that are completely the opposite what of what I teach them uh, right. at home based on our culture. Now. Are you going to tell them right away that their school is wrong and that you are wrong? No. There are two different systems. One right. is not better than the other, yeah. but there will always be a way to marry both of them so that you retain your culture and you do not break the law of the land that you are living in. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what I tell them. But what are my white colleagues telling their own uh, children about things that they find conflicting between the African culture and the European culture. Are they outrightly condemning those things and telling them, don't listen to them, they are stupid, they don't know what they are doing? Or are they trying to take a nuanced position like I try to do with my children? So I think there is a need for a whole lot of uh, sensitization, re-education, about how we raise our children, yeah. raising them in such a manner that you do not tell them what to think about, but you give them the tool to think in very constructive uh, manner. Yeah. And then another last point I want to make on this uh, issue of uh, Afrophobia is the fact that the time has come for the world to begin to have very honest conversations and reflections yes now the individual has to start by himself and i will give you know i like to illustrate these things uh, with um, example a young man uh, here in belgium in his early 20s in his reflections about uh, race and racism here in belgium he wrote and i'm talking of 
uh, something uh, I read about a day or two um, ago. Okay. He said he was in the tra on the train. A young man uh, of African origin walked in. His first reflex was to check where his wallet is and yeah. make sure that it was still there. Yeah. He went even a bit further by ensuring that for the rest of the journey, he had his hand on, on his, his wallet. Yeah. Why? That's because sad. a black <laughs> a black chap walked into the uh, into the train. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, yes, afterwards, he made a reflection and a, an honest reflection. He said, "Wait a minute, what am I doing? What is wrong with me? Yeah. Am I not doing this?" And that's a natural reflex. Mm -hmm. Am I not doing this because this young man is uh, is uh, is a I black uh, dude? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would I have done the same if it was a, a white? Mm -hmm. And then he posed a very important question to his fellow white people. He said, "Let us all reflect on our attitudes, like he has done. Be yeah. honest first to yourself by admitting some of those prejudices." Yeah. that you have because yeah. that would be the beginning yeah. of actually addressing those subconscious and uh, you know unintentional prejudice that each and every one of them uh, has so there is the time has come for everybody in the society to begin to have very honest reflections yes. about the prejudices that they, they carry because that would uh, take us a long way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you mentioned the right prejudice. 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 Right. It is real. Yeah. That we cannot overlook. Yeah, that's that true. I just wanted to establish. Okay, thank that, you. That's good. Well said. That's good. Yeah. Um, I think I, I do agree with what Colin said. Yeah. It has to start with parenting. Okay. And it, he gave a very good example of uh, you know how he went about with his two boys i think that's quite admirable yeah um indeed if we want to address this it needs to start from the school system it seriously needs to start from the school system um uh, of all the protests that i see happening around the globe yeah vis-a-vis -vis this uh, george floyd uh, mm -hmm. thing yeah i i wanted to see young students taking this entire baton mm -hmm and letting their voices also be heard. Because the school system is where most of these changes can come from. Okay. Yesterday I watched a clip of a young girl who was talking with her parents, a yeah. white American girl. Yeah. And you can tell the passion that she has in explaining to her parents who obviously, evidently were racist. Okay. You know, and she was explaining to them why black lives matter. matter. Yes. And you should all see the clip. It's gone, mm. gone viral now. I mean, she couldn't believe what she was hearing from her own parents. Yeah, okay. She just couldn't believe it. So these are some of the things that, that we, we need to, we need to um, uh, look at. We need to understand that, indeed, it has to start... From the school system mm. and parenting plays a, a very important role in all of that mm -hmm. most kids like we say you're not born racist we're all born without seeing color yeah so we are taught to see color it's true it's true so on this note i want us to round up do we have a final word to say to our audience who have listened to us i think if you're i mean if you're a black white blue or green i mean the, the key word which I'm going to take from what Colin said, do that honest reflection. Do that. Because I, I also believe that that is one step to healing. That is one step to change. Mm -hmm. If you do that honest uh, reflection, you would understand that, whoa, this which you have been doing for years yes. is actually not good. There are certain things we could not touch, but because of our time, we're going to round up. Right. And we hope we can have... Uh, another certain like this to discuss about you know the actual situation confronting the black africans uh with the eu setting right you know regarding to job education sports and other things right i think it would be nice to talk touch about on this that and, no, I, I agree there, there's a protest Afro coming afrophobia there. uh on the european continent okay you know 
So I want us to prepare. There is a protest coming this week okay. in front of the Start House. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if you guys are following it. I'm following it with, with an eagle's eye to figure out, you know, what can be done or what can be said. All right. So, mm -hmm. Sir, Honorable Collins. Yes. What's your last uh, word you want to say to our viewers? So I don't want to listen to you tonight. Yes, thank you. My uh, last word is that um, we need to all, first and foremost, admit to ourselves, honestly, that we carry one form of prejudice or the other. Yeah. Once we make that admission to ourselves, uh, it is the right towards actually getting rid of those um, prejudices. Okay? Because once we do that, first and foremost, we are doing ourselves uh, a very, very big favor. Mm -hmm. And then also, on a positive note, there are thousands, you know, of very good, decent white people. Yes. Enough in the society mm -hmm. to turn all of these uh, negativities around so that, at least for a start, that feeling of non-discrimination is spread very, very wide. But those mm -hmm. white people have got to also start stepping up. And I yes. think they are stepping up because if we look at what happened in Minneapolis where all of this started and the marches that we have seen across Around the world, the even yes. from China, you see that white people are stepping up and actually, you know, standing by black people to say yeah. enough of this nonsense, yeah. we can't go on uh, this way. Exactly. That has to be increased and it has to That's be, um, you know, it has to be uh, encouraged. And a program right? such as <laughs> yours has actually helped, you know, is helping to propagate, uh, you know, those uh, positives. Thank you, sir. Thank I, you, sir. I'm, I'm always yes. saying One that... Second with you. I'm saying that the African ancestors have woken up. Really? Seriously. They've woken up. And they've woken up for a good cause. Okay. So that's why we now know that we can't take it any longer. Exactly. Wow. It took, it took a giant of, 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 of a person in, in George Floyd for that spirit to, to wake up. up. Hmm. And it's nice to see. Wow. It is. Apostle Larry. Really really Apostle what do you have to say? Because uh, you've been part of this uh, yeah, panel. Uh, my piece already. Uh, but more has to be done. Yeah. There's a lot of work that has to go into it. If you see something, well, say something. I think he's going to take more He's going to take it until a long we, time. We exercise that. I think he's going to take a long time. Because it, this, it, it these will. people have been on this thing for years. Yeah. And they have enjoyed it, yeah. you know. It has become a system. Yeah. So it's going to take a long time for us to overcome this racism. Can I appreciate uh, the lady who called uh, to Thank you so much, all of you, and the uh, Francis guy who have been calling us uh, through the Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank um, you. Honorable Collins. Collins. Thank Honorable you. Honorable Richard. <laughs> Hope to see you again. Honorable Apostle Larry. My pleasure. God richly bless you, people. And uh, we hope to uh, have the second batch of this discussion soon. Okay. Is that okay? Is that okay, Honorable Collins? Always, yes, indeed. Time. Always welcome. Always Look welcome. at, is this your friend here who calls to the time? Is this friend? <laughs> is this friend? That's all right. That's all right. See, this Do, friend. Those things happen. <laughs> so, all right, the next time is going to be better. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, your, our guest, our love to your lovely wife and family. I will because do that. we know it's a, it's a dinner time, so we're going to let you go now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So, all Thank our viewers all over the world, we say a goodbye Thank to you. you, and we hope to see you by this time again. Next week. Yep. Let's no say problem. Bye to them, honey. Bye. 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 And stay safe yep. from COVID-19. Yeah. God bless you.